Hey, what's up everybody? How you doing? I want to go ahead and make a little video detailing specifically why you shouldn't be buying a console right at launch and why you should probably wait six months to a year in order to actually get this new hardware. If you were playing on PC, you wouldn't be having this problem, but you know, that's a video for another day. <clears throat> so, allegedly... We're starting, we'll go ahead and start off with uh, the consoles are smoking. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. And now after we saw that, well, is it real? Well, we're not completely sure, but these guys at Xbox Studio, they're not verified or anything, so they're not an official source, but they seem to be fanboys. And allegedly, this is all, they're making a, this a, a fake news allegation, this, uh, uh, this stuff right here, like they're saying that people are taking r big fat rips off their vape mod, blowing it underneath their new Xbox, and they're waiting for it to smoke. Let's go ahead and find the part where uh, he shows uh, how they're doing it. Let's go ahead and take... Okay, so we, we saw that. You saw that, and uh, it's it seems pretty plausible. It seems like the myth has been busted now. Maybe uh, people are just blowing smoke up the Xbox just so they can try and get some uh, Twitter or social media clout. And it seems completely plausible that that would actually happen. Ooh, Britney Spears loses court appeal to remove her father from conservatorship. conservatorship. I don't know what that means, but oh my god, Britney. Oh, oh Lord, enough. But anyway, let's go ahead and check out this little uh, story right here. I, I was watching review uh, uh, Rich from Review Tech USA. Go check out uh, Review Tech USA on YouTube. He's fucking awesome. Great stuff. And apparently, people are having screws falling out of their Xbox Series X. Let's go ahead and just read this. FedEx dropped off my Xbox Series X this morning much sooner than anticipated by 8 o'clock p.m., but to my surprise, the box sounded like a baby rattle. I watched the FedEx driver put the box on my desk quite safely, and the box is very well maintained. So well maintained that the corners and edges were just about nearly perfect. I knew this package wasn't mishandled in any way, even though I hadn't seen the package before it was placed on my deck. So why did it sound like a pebble in a glass rattling around? I was fairly concerned at this point, as I figured there was something in the box that was not secured properly. Although, in retrospect, there is nothing in the box that could make this sound. Nevertheless, I continued with the Xbox Series X unboxing. I took my time unboxing the unit on my big YouTube channel where I have millions and millions of subscribers, as I was taking pictures for the site and completely forgetting that noise from before, which goes to show you how much time has elapsed or had elapsed. Finally, I removed and hoisted the console out of its packaging, finally feeling the true heft of this console, which I estimate to be approximately 47,000 pounds. Okay, so it, it literally, you know, how much, how much is a metric ton? Okay, in pounds, you know, in, in God's... 2,000 pounds, okay, so... This man uh, unboxed a two and almost like a, a, maybe a, a quarter a ton Xbox. This this is this is how it is. You know this is this is super cool. You know I'm probably calling bullshit on this because you know come on. So anyway, two and a quarter ton Xbox Series X uh, he unboxed. Man, it must have been very very hefty. He's lucky that this is all all he got wrong with it. You know just a screw coming out of a Two and a quarter ton fucking Xbox. I went to remove the phone wrapping from around my new console, around the new console, only to hear that damn noise and have my heart sink like the Titanic. The Xbox Series X, uh, uh, you know, weighing in at two and a quarter to uh, tons. The Xbox Series X that I've been waiting for is broken. You've got to be kidding me. Remaining calm. I opened the wrapping and rolled the Xbox end over end. This dude has fucking super strength. Two and a quarter tons. 
only to hear the Price is Right Plinko game being played in my brand new Series X. For some reason, I had figured one of the Blade fans snapped off. That would suck. So I tried to shine my iPhone. See, there's your first problem. You're, you're using an iPhone and Apple products. Fail. So, so, I tried to, so I tried to shine my iPhone light into its top grilly. God, this fucking... All right, so these people need to hire a fucking editor. Seriously. So I tried to shine my iPhone light into the top grilly, but everything was intact. And now I'm like fucking proofreading his shit because I'm thinking I'm going to find another typo. This is a professional site, by the way, people. I flipped the unit to its front so I can see through the back vents. Still, dot, 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 nothing. I tried flipping it over, flipping it end over end again, hopefully to get a visual on whatever the hell was bouncing around when suddenly, as the Series X was upside down, something fell into my hand. This clearly can't be right. Much to my surprise, what emerged was a long torque screw. I don't know if that's spelled right or not either. With a bit of blue lux, l Loctite. Loctite? I never... Oh, bl blue Loctite, whatever. Oh, which was completely untouched. Where did this mysterious metallic cylindrical inclined plane come from? Was it... An extra screw that accidentally got dropped in? Was it a screw that didn't make it in and now my Xbox Series X is compromised? Probably. I was glad to find this now. Instead of after booting the new console on, as foreign metal objects and circuit boards generally don't mix well, will the new will, will the Xbox Series X even boot? I wondered if the other Series Xs were having the same problem, but a quick Google search only turned up an Xbox One or an Xbox One X with a loose screw on Reddit. I now realize I had one twice. A talk about Xbox Series X that was the only one to have a loose screw. Luckily, the Series X boots and runs completely fine, with no apparent ill effects. But I have no way to know if this will have any detrimental effects on the performance later in its life. I did a teardown video that shows the screw in question. It appears to be a chasis screw around the nine minute mark yeah we're not watching your shit uh discuss around the night at, at the nine minute mark spawn wave discusses these exact this these exact screws at length no pun intended and sadly gives no reassurances to performance but at least we know where it came from i tweeted the picture out to xbox support earlier today with no response what would you do how would you replace it edit some other xbox series gamers have been experiencing the same problem and there's a YouTube video here. I guess we'll go ahead and check this out. Let me go ahead and give you a quick rundown as to why you should never buy the first iteration of any console, okay? Remember the red ring of death for the Xbox 360? That was because everyone rushed out immediately to buy the new fucking console. And they didn't wait till every until the company that releases the console uh, pumped out a few more iterations so it can work the bugs and kinks out and stuff like that. This is why you don't do any of that stuff. And if you think I'm just harping on Xbox, let me go ahead and go to PlayStation. We'll go ahead and check this out. So this is PS3. Remember when it launched and all that stuff? PS3 was given the number 8 spot on PC World's Magazine's list of top 21 tech screw-ups of 2006, where it was criticized for being late, expensive, and incompatible. Games Radar ranked PS3 as the top item in a feature on game-related PR disasters, asking Sony... Asking how Sony managed to take one of the most anticipated game systems of all time within the space of a year, turn it into a hate object reviled by the entire internet, but added that despite its problems, the system had untapped potential. Well, let's go ahead and ask Gabe Newell, uh, Newell of Valve what he has to say. Developers also found the machine difficult to program for. In 2007, Gabe, New Gabe Newell, you know, our lord and master... Praise be, praise be to Valve, all hail. Gabe Newell of Valve said, The PS3 is a total disaster on so many levels. I think it's really clear that Sony lost track of what customers and what developers wanted. He continued, 
I'd say even at this late date that they should just cancel it and do it and do a do over. Just say this is a horrific disaster. This is a horrible disaster, and we're really sorry. And we're going to stop selling this and stop trying to convince people to develop for it. Doug Lombardi, VP of Marketing for Valve, has since stated that Valve is interested in developing for the console and is looking to hire talented PS3 programmers for future products. He later restated Valve's position. Until we have the ability to get a PS3 team together, until we find people who want to come to Valve or who are at Valve want to work on it, I don't see us really. I don't really see us moving into that platform, and they really didn't either. I think you had uh, Portal Two as stated. Uh, as stated uh, uh, later on. At Sony's E3 2010 press conference, Newell made uh, Newell 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 whoever whatever fucking Gabe. Made a live uh, Newell made a live appearance to recant his previous statements, amending uh, them slightly, citing Sony's move to make the system more developer friendly and to announce that Valve would be developing Portal 2 for the system. He also claimed that the inclusion of Steamworks Valve's system to automatically update their software independently will help make the PS3 version of Portal 2 the best console version on the market. See, that's fucking cool. That's fucking cool. Unfortunately, we also have this Activision Blizzard CEO, Bobby Kotick, had criticized PS3's high development cost and inferior attach rate and returned to that of the Xbox 360 and the Wii. He believes these factors in pushing developers away from working on the console. In an interview with the Times, Kodak stated, I am getting concerned about Sony. The PS3 is losing a bit of momentum and they don't take it easy and they don't make it easy for me to support the platform. He continued, it's expensive to develop for that console and the Wii and Xbox are just selling better. Games generate a better return on invested capital on the Xbox and on the PlayStation. So blah 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 blah. It's a uh, it's it's hard to program for. It's expensive to hard. Oh, it was expensive to program for. And if you were a dev and you and remember the uh, if you were a dev and you remember the uh, the Sony promised that you would be able to uh, install other operating systems on there. Notice that that was uh zucked out of fucking existence when they whenever they upgraded the the model PlayStation. So you're kind of screwed on that. But honestly, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. Like most of these freaking games, or most of these game systems will be pretty good if given enough time to develop and if you don't just rush out and go grab the first iteration of this console. Yeah. Everything will be fine if you don't rush out and buy the first iteration of this console. It's just not worth doing. It's it's not worth being the the first kid on the block, the first kid on your block to have the new console. It's just not. It, it's a, it's a waste of money and emotion and time because you are going to get real emotional if you put down like five six hundred bucks and get a freaking thing that either smokes or is losing freaking uh, gears, or if you uh, were lucky at all and you pre-ordered it, if, if the fucking things even, like, come through. I noticed that PlayStation's having that problem right now with its new PS5. It, it, in my opinion, I, I, I rock the fucking PC, you know? I, I don't really do consoles that much. I love consoles. I still have my PS3. I have all my games for my PS3. And uh, I, I loved my Xbox 360. I, you know, it, it had to go because unfortunately it died. And I had had it. I, I had had it for a really long time. I got it for a hundred bucks during a, a Christmas during its like Black Friday Brindaru sale. It was fucking awesome. Got the black version with a, a bunch of games for it and stuff. Like the first game, I, like I, I bought it specifically so I can play Halo Reach. But anyway, uh, yeah, TLDR. Uh, don't buy the first iteration. Wait six months to a year. Wait for the stuff to get worked out. Wait for the bugs to get worked out. You will be happy that you waited. You can always just download fucking stuff on the internet. You can you can just down God. You can pirate fucking practically anything you want. Just you know what? Fuck console. Just get a PS3. Uh, just get just get a PC. You'll be happy that I told you to do that. You'll be happy that you did it. So anyway. Thanks for coming out. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for watching the video. Like, share, subscribe, yada, yada, yada. And I'll see you in the next video. Ta-ta.